Welcome to our channel ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your continued support. Just in case you are watching us for the first time, please take a second or two and subscribe to our channel. Click the notification bell. You can also like this video. If you do that, it goes a long way in promoting the video and further promoting the channel. You can also share our videos to all our returning subscribers and all our supporters. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, Majutu ni mjuku. That is one kiswila that was taught in primary. That regrets are grandchildren. They come later. That is an African proverb. Now if there is one person who understands the meaning of that proverb is none other than the president of Kenya, William Samuel Ruto. A few years ago, William Samuel Ruto, acting against all the pieces of advice and caution from experts decided to go head on with the family of the first founding father of the nation, the Kenyatta family. And he did about five things, if you can remember. One, he accused the sons of Uhuru Kenyatta of being in possession of illegal guns. And at some point, a strange subar with a strange number plate went to Uhuru's son's home. And Uhuru had to rush to his son's home, having received a distressed call. Ruto's government also accused Mamangina of not paying taxes, something that vexed Mamangina. And she chose one of the holiest places, the church. And she went there and dared William Ruto that if at all she had not paid any taxes, then part of her property would be taken to clear the taxes. Then later, Ruto withdrew security from Mamangina. He also interfered with Uhuru's businesses. Not only that, he accused Uhuru Kenyatta as the one who was sponsoring Azimir demonstrations. With all this, William Ruto thought he was on top of things. He wanted to show Uhuru Kenyatta that he was the one on the driver's seat and that he was at the helm of everything. Part of what I'm talking about is this. Lakini sirikali hiko na mundo, laini yake ya vile mambo inaedeshwa. Mambo ya kodi, ini kamtax ni lasima, mkubwa au mdogo, kulipa, kulingana na uweso wake, na mbato yake. Hiyo sikazi ya kusungumusa, katika kwa makaseti, kwa mikutano, kwa matibi. Kwa sababu kikosa kukulipa kodi, unapere kwa kontini kwa sababu hiyo kwa sedia. Ukikosa kulipa, hili onatakiwa kulipa. Lasima hiyo bitu yako, itashukuliwa, itahusuwa. Sindi oyu seria, ya sirikali. Na hivyo ya kuna haja. Na hile laini ya kupanya kasi hiyo, hiko. Hakuna mambo ya ati kwa halipia wale wengine majina na nini. Tio watu wa sikiki ya kewanapanya kasi. Wanaendesa hiji. Habana. Mutu asitakiwe. Alibe ile kitu wanatakiwa kulipa. Na kama ni mimi, hata nikiwa na mwaka moja na kosea pila kulipa, maali shukuliwa, ilibe ile taxi kwa sababu ni rasima. Kwa hivyo ya kuna haja, ya kupanya kasi, ya ngesiasa, hivi na vile, na hiyo siyo kwenye. 
And now former President Uhuru Kenyatta is tonight setting the record straight regarding the number of firearms in the family's possession. Uhuru says that his two sons own three guns each, contrary to a government claim that his family members have 23 guns in their possession. Uhuru claims there was a ploy to plant drugs and guns in his son's home. In an extraordinary audience with media editors in Nairobi, Uhuru delved into a wide range of issues that included a some advisory to his successor, President William Ruto. Kenyatta had just three words. Power is fleeting. In a candid session with media editors, retired President Uhuru Kenyatta said he was enraged by last Friday's raid on his son's home in Karen. The former president has clarified that his two sons own six firearms between them. The first son has two pistols and a rifle for sport hunting, and the second son has two rifles and a pistol, while the daughter does not own any guns. All the six guns, he says, were legitimately acquired after he left office and the son's state-provided security could not be extended. Uhuru father says he believes the raid was meant to act as a conduit for the planting of guns and drugs in his son's home. <laughs> Last Friday's drama, Uhuru says he was in the vicinity and received a distress call from his son that a vehicle with a foreign number plate and some individuals were at his gate and wanted to run some his son's home. The vehicle's Sudanese registration number raised suspicions as to the intention of the occupants of the vehicle. Uhuru says as a parent, he was extremely angry, hurt, pained and upset that his child was under attack. He also says the propaganda surrounding the guns saga is a diversion and that he is a scapegoat for the administration as it digresses from the real issues in the country. His frustration extends beyond his sons to his mother. After the government withdrew all security from his mother's two homes, he has been forced to share his security with his mother in addition to hiring a private firm. Guarding her homes in Nairobi and Ishaweri, leaving her with just eight who have since been recalled and now leaving her without any state protection. Uhuru says the withdrawal of Mamangina's security is absurd since she has enjoyed state protection since 1963 by virtue of her being the country's first first lady and even after Jomo Kenyatta's death. He also claims that his family's business has been unfairly targeted by the government in what he says is breach of procurement rules. Yes, yes. 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 Uhuru father claims that he has received reliable information that the government is planning to stage manage attacks on senior government officials and blame it on him. He also refutes claims that he is involved in the anti-government protests, stating that he is puzzled by those claims while expressing shock at what he says is betrayal from those he had mentored. But it seems William Ruto is regretting the actions that he made a few years ago because Mamangina has decided to strike and it is a very bad tackle. She has tackled Ruto on the wrong side and William Ruto had no any other choice but to swallow humble pie. Now one of the news that has grabbed headlines is that when Kenyans were shocked about Ruto's rush to Ishaweri to meet Uhuru Kenyatta, there are very many things that transpired before that very meeting. We are reliably informed that William Ruto tried to invite Uhuru Kenyatta to meet him in State House, and Uhuru declined. He even made further efforts to suggest that they could meet in Uhuru's Nairobi home. Uhuru refused. Uhuru insisted that he ever he wanted to meet Uhuru, then it was supposed to be done in Ichaweri. And that is where they finally met. Now experts are looking at this, this and they're saying, serves William Ruto right. Because when he got to the presidency, power got into his head. He was so much obsessed by this idea of showing Uhuru Kenyatta that he was no longer the assistant, the principal assistant. He was no longer the deputy president of Uhuru. He was now the president, having made his way through to State House.
and he decided to do weird things. Not knowing that his actions would backfire on him, his actions would haunt him. And why am I saying that this is Mamangina striking back? The reason why Uhuru Kenyatta refused to meet William Ruto in State House is obviously because of trust issues. William Ruto has got trust deficit between himself and Kenyans, between himself and every other leader. I remember Ferdinand Waititu was saying each and every person in this country was, was cheated in one way or the other. Whether we were in Mamamboga, we were in Mutua Boda Boda, we were in Hasla, we were in Kijana. Wengine hata walidanganya ya kwamba Raila alikuwa mganga na wila mutu ndi alikuwa mutu mishi ambaye alikuwa metoka kwa mungu mwenyewe. And so each and every person was deceived in one way or the other. In the manner in which he mistreated the Kenyatta family, he could not earn their trust anymore. And that is why when Uhuru was invited to go to State House, I believe Uhuru still consulted the mother because such invitation could have not gone without the mother knowing. And I'm sure it is Mamagina who said, my son, if you have to meet that Surugoi man, then it has to be in our home. If he wants to do anything, if he wants to do any, if he want to, if he's got any mischievous or hidden agenda, let him do it in Shaweri here. By going to State House, you are subjecting yourself to his authority. And that is why they refused. And I believe these were orders from Mamangina. And why? There is no way you can trust someone because Mamangina at her age deserves respect. No matter what amount of mistakes she has done, there is a way you can always resolve it rather than going public to start humiliating her, knowing very well that she was paying taxes, yet they went with all this politicized public sympathy and they were saying that, you know, hustlers are paying taxes, but Mamangina had refused. This angered Mamangina. And when Mamangina remembers how the grandson was mistreated, leveling charges that were neither here nor there, she could no longer trust William Ruto. And William Ruto has suffered the consequences of... Now he sits back and, in retrospect, realizes that it was a big mistake to try and attack Uhuru. Even after Uhuru claims that I handed over power peacefully in accordance with the law, despite the fact that my candidate was not declared the winner. Yet, William Ruto still came with guns blazing against me, against my family, against my business. And this is why I'm telling you that William Ruto has got no place to hide himself because Kenyans have rejected him. You can see Mamagina rejected him, did not want anything to do with their meeting at first, whether in the Indian Nairobi zone, wherever. It forced him to carry some goods as a token of appreciation or just uh, just saying thank you for allowing me to meet you. And I believe that was taken to Mamangina. Sources say that they must have talked about very many things, including Uhuru donating a few of his friends to get into the cabinet. But Kenyans have given them one word. We are not boarding. 